My name's Keith Cooper and uh, in this very quick update I'm just going to cover a couple of printers that I'm testing and have tested. You may have seen I recently did a review of this, the ET2850. It's a four colour ink tank printer from Epson, an eco tank printer. But the next printer I'm going to be testing is this, the Epson ET8500. Now this is an interesting printer. The two may look similar here. Well, all right, one's black, one's white, but they look broadly similar. They both have a scanner and things. They are aimed at very different markets. The six inks in this, this has a pigment black and then a black cyan, magenta, yellow and a grey ink. This is internally, from a print point of view, identical to the ET8550, the larger one that I tested um, a year or two ago. And basically my ET8550 ICC profiles will work perfectly on this. This is an A4 printer. That was an A3 plus 13 inch printer. So this is very similar. I mean, this has got a minuscule screen on it, um, whatever. It's not touch screen. This is the budget range of it. This is a document printer, home office printer. This one's a photo printer. Now, I know the sort of performance I can get from it. I'm going to be doing testing profiles, various other things like that. This one has a touch screen on it, all kinds of bits and pieces. Uh, we are talking completely different league in terms of print quality if you're interested in photos and artwork. Reason I mention this is that I only have printers for a relatively short period of time to test. If you've got any questions relating to this, the 8500, uh, or the 8550, um, say they are the same apart from the paper size. If you've got any questions of that that I've not covered in perhaps my 8550 reviews, or you didn't realize that the 8500 and the 8550 were so similar, then please do ask because uh, it's people's suggestions for things like this that actually sort of remind me what to test and show different bits. I'm going to do a, a setup video of this, which I'll publish in a few days. Um, I've been looking again at the Mac AirPrint driver problem. Um, I think I've found out why you can still get it wrong. Um, the gist of it would be when you see instructions on the driver install process, read the instructions and follow what they do. Don't just think you know what you're doing. Um, I have managed to accidentally install the AirPrint driver on both this, a MacOS 13 Ventura machine, and this laptop, an old one. It's quite easy to do if you're not careful, but um, I'll be covering that in the setup details for this and that. But there we have two nominally similar printers, both ink tank printers, um, very different in performance, I'm going to suspect. Uh, we shall see, though. So let me know if you've got any questions, and uh, there you go. Thanks.